Good morning. We will call this meeting to order. And uh, the first, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for being here today. Uh, public comment. We have one uh, citizen who signed up today, Mr. Larry Pierce. Mr. Pierce, if you could come forward and just state your address and restate your name. And your subject matter is understanding rocket scientists. Um, you know protocol, I don't have to repeat <coughs> myself. You have three minutes and please, uh, civility is important in your discussion. Yes, ma'am, before you my time sense. starts, I've got my official time here, so I have rehearsed what I'm going to say in three minutes. But okay. Larry Pierce, and I don't want to say the address anymore. I've been told that I shouldn't because of the uh, ramifications I'm into. My address is down here. Is that okay? You good. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to step my time so we know it's official here from Greenwich Village. All right. First thing I want you all to notice is I went to the mall and had my hat modified. It says retired in white letters. I want you to know how fast the year went by. As of as of the sixth of this month, I think Major Holmes knows it went by fast. We're a year older. So I am off of my stalking charge, okay? Alright. Which didn't affect a lot of things anyway. Alright. So what I want to say is that this past week I went down to Cape Canaveral and I went down to Cape Canaveral for a reason. This man came out, and if you know anything about World War II, Dr. Von Braun was the super smart 35-year-old scientist for Hitler who was in charge of the V2 program. And when the war was over, he came over to Alabama, and they set up shop there with all his people and scientists. And this man came over to me that looked just like him. I swear it could have been his brother. And he said, can I help you? I said, yes, I would like to be a rocket scientist. <coughs> he said, oh, you would, okay. Uh, okay, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta look like one, okay? So he gave me this hat to put on. So I put on this hat, and then he said, can you explain the law of gravity according to Newton in 1600 when he went to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, this is true, and he threw an apple and a coin over to see if they both hit the ground at the same time. So what I'm trying to show you is the law of gravity states what goes up within the gravitational field must come down. Now, what I'm trying to say by that, what I'm trying to say by that is that there's things that happen. And before I left, he said, you, you are appointed the rocket scientist from Douglasville. So I'm the first rocket scientist, okay? Now, that satire is made for you to understand that when you talk to people and constituents and people, if Larry Pierce, the rocket scientist, don't understand it, my friends and constituents don't understand it. So explain it, because once somebody comes up here and explains something, nobody here is allowed to talk or ask a question. So just remember, the level in which you talk, preacher, otherwise, engineer and all, you got to come down to base ground. Now, other than that, I have nothing to complain about, and I really tried hard. Sometimes we're funny, sometimes we're not. But there should be seriousness in sometimes skits. And my time is over by my clock. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Pierce. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was the funnest time I had. Board commissioners, uh, if you could tomorrow, please take a look at your minutes so we can approve accordingly. And then tomorrow, tab number four, if you look at tab number four, it's proclamation is proclaiming the week of March 9th through the 13th, 2020 uh, as Domestic Minor Sex Trafficking Awareness and Prevention Week in Douglas County. So we will have a proclamation tomorrow. That will be read by Jessica Frazier um, from the SS Life Center. Also, with tab number five, we have a public hearing tomorrow, which is uh, on the FY Fiscal Year 2020 Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality Federal Application for Connect Douglas <coughs> Bus Service and Approval of the Resolution <coughs> to file the app grant, uh, application grant. Uh, Director Watson, if you could just come up and just give us a brief. Yes, ma'am. During the public on. hearing tomorrow, what I'll do is I will give a very brief description of, of what we're requesting. 
Uh, we're requesting $1.6 million in federal money, uh, congestion mitigation and air quality that will be flexed over to the Federal Transit Administration. This will be to assist us in uh, financing the second uh, 12 months operation of the, the bus service, which will start about May the, the 8th. Uh, so after I briefly explain, explain that, of course, we'll take questions from the, the audience and the Board of Commissioners. And then after that, uh, I would request that the commissioners uh, give the chairman a permer permission to sign the resolution that we need as part of the application. Okay. Thank you so much for giving us that brief, brief description. Any questions from the board? <coughs> okay. All right. Thank you. We look forward to the public hearing tomorrow. Um, for the commissioners, we're going to move right into the business items. Uh, tab number six, authorization to rescind the contract with jo Johnson Law Firm approved December 17, 2019, and, and authorization to approve a new contract with Bunny Binkley. Uh, Judge Harris, um, she okay. Just okay. go up to the podium and just share with the board of commissioners what this program is. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Bonnie Binkley has been one of our contract attorneys for about four years. When she originally started, she was in practice with Johnson Law Firm, and now she's an individual practice. So we just want to give her the contract. <coughs> Any questions for Yeah. What switch again? Um, they were in practice together uh -huh. in the beginning, and. Um, Ms. Johnson is doing law in McDonough now, and uh, Bonnie Binkley is going to stay with us. Stay with us, okay. And what is the, um, the amount of the contract that we're giving? Uh, 48000 It's staying the same. There's no change in the contract. Okay, so it, it's just the net budget, uh, net neutral. Yes. Okay, okay. go for the question. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, thank you so much. Okay. Tab number seven, authorization for the chairman to execute an employment <laughs> contract with Ray Williams as assistant public defender in state court. Attorney Monica Miles. Good morning. Good morning. So I'll start out. This, I, I have tab six, I'm sorry, tab seven and eight, and they're both, there's no impact on the budget. It'll be net neutral. Um, the first one is we had uh, one of our attorneys who was under contract in state court uh, resigned at the beginning of January. So we have hired her replacement, which is Ray Williams, to uh, take that position for the remainder of the year. So there's no impact on the budget. It's just, it's just substituting one attorney for another. Tab 8, or I guess you want me to go on to tab 8 or do you want to? Yeah, tab 8 is authorization for the chairman to execute or revise employment contracts with Aaron Lannon, Christian Bonet, Craig Kloski in Superior Court, and Angel Contreras in the state court as assistant public defenders, if you could. Sure. Certainly. So in the 2020 budget, our office was approved for a new attorney position to, um, to be in Superior Court. <coughs> we are going to move Aaron Lanning, who's a current employee, up into that position. So it will be a promotion for her. And then with her position being vacant, then Christian Bonet moves into that position, leaving his position vacant. And then Craig Kolsky moves into that. And then you have Angel Contreras moving into Craig. So. Again, it's just promotions, but there's no impact on the budget. It's just <coughs> having to amend the contracts to reflect the changes. Okay. Any questions from the board? Okay. Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, get, you know, I've always asked this question every year during our, our budget conversation. So, how many attorneys do we have in the public defender? Roughly. With the new position, I believe we'll have 14. 14. And how many do we have with the DA? You know, roughly what ball? Oh, I don't, 40, 50? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming. I don't know. I'd have to count. I don't it, know. It's usually a three to one ratio. Uh, um, is this, so do you have sufficient, I mean, I know the Board of Commissioners approved um, um, a role for you. Um, does, that, does that move you along? Does that help in the progress of, of being able to keep up with the workload, the caseload? I mean, I, I know we've got, what, 10,000 um, um, misdemeanors and 10,000 felonies year over year. How do you keep up with it? Well, we do the best we can uh, trying to keep retaining the experience and skilled attorneys that we have is key because it takes so long to train an attorney and a lot of the experience and just knowledge of the job in, in Douglas County in the courts that's that's unique because every county is different that's how things are run in the court system so really trying to retain somebody who has the experience is key yeah. um, 
and I don't know how many prosecutors the DAs have. I don't want to. I, yeah. I don't know the number, but obviously we go. We have, we do both state court, and superior court, and of course there's a separate office for each one of those. So I usually think of it in terms of combining their numbers, but I right. don't know how many they have. Um, so yeah, we just do the best we can, and we're very grateful to get the new attorney position, which will start April 6th. So that'll be next month, and it's going to have a big impact on our office. That answers your question. Yes, and, and last question is like, what is the normal tenure of a public defender? I mean, and, and again, we recognize that um, obviously pay is always an issue, benefits and so forth, but also um, the rights of the actual person that's um, obviously being defended. So. I mean, are they getting quality counsel? I know they are. I just, for the record, just speak on it. The tenure, it just depends. Um, so a lot of the lawyers in our office have been there close to 20 years. I've been here <coughs> I've been 25 years, and that's just in Douglas County. And I practice as a public defender in another state before here, so I've given my age away. But um, a lot of the attorneys have been, I mean, we've had quite a handful that have been there almost 20 years, and a good number that have been there 10 seems like a lot of the folks that leave might be there for about five years, five to ten years, and sometimes people just get burnt out. They just get tired and they think they want to go do something different. A lot of times they regret it, but um, and yeah, it's hard work, but it just takes a special person. Yeah, I, I, I've heard reputation-wise that we train people for um, other areas and stuff, so evidently you, there's good experience they get. Obviously, you guys do good mentoring along the way, but again, that's always a personal choice. That's all I wanted to ask. Ma'am, that's my third question. I yield. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you so much. All right, thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to tab number nine. Authorization for the District Attorney's Office to accept the Violence Against Women's Act uh, continuation <coughs> grant from Criminal Justice Coordinating Council CJCC in the amount of $50,000 with a match of $16,667 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Uh, Mrs. Thompson, for Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is authorization to accept continuation of the file grant, which is Victims Against Women's Act, and to sign all appropriate documents. Any questions from the board? Commissioner Guider? Yes, uh, we have a local match, and uh, was that in the budget? I'm just yes. Yes, this okay. is continuation. Well, what authorizes the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget? So, uh, Oh, there, it should not be men in the budget. Yeah. Okay. No, there is no no effect to the budget whatsoever. This okay. is exactly what we had the last two That years. was confusing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That was okay. confusing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, you, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Our clerk will make a correction. Mm -hmm. right. Commissioner Guyton. All right. We'll move on to tab number 10, authorization uh, for the solicitor's office to accept the continuation of the 2020 <clears throat> Violence Against Women Act grant through the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council in the amount of $71,801 with a match of $17,950 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Um, Mrs. Um, as an ours, ours is incorrect as well. It does not change the budget. And it's the same budget. We've okay. had the same grant since 2014, so there, is, there has never been any budget changes on it. It's the same amount. Okay. okay. Any questions from the board? And it's valid as well, the same grant. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. We're going to move to tab number 11, authorization to accept the emergency management performance grant from GEMA in the amount of $39,721 in federal funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget as well. Yes, on this one, yes. Okay, we will. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, we want to amend the budget on this one. Okay. Uh, this is uh, uh, the grant we get through the Georgia Emergency Management, which is a pass through grant from. Uh, Homeland Security um, Federal Emergency Management Agency. We, uh, every year we have a work plan with, uh, with Georgia Emergency Management. If we meet certain goals and criteria and they decide to fund it that year, we um, we get approved for this grant. And you just never know when it's going to come in. Um, it's kind of fluctuate when we receive it. We got approved and we got the check uh, last week and I turned it over to finance and just asked to be able to accept the, accept the funds and uh, amend my budget. Okay. Any questions from the board? No match. No match. Yeah, the, the, the match is met by my salary. There actually is a match. I'll make sure clear that we can take my salary because it's eligible because of the work I do. Okay. So my salary is the match for the grant. So there is a match, but it's met by in kind by my salary. Okay. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Good stuff. Tab number 12. Authorization to accept the ACCG Group Health Benefits Program Health Promotion Grant in the amount of $3,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. 
budget um, director Perry yes there and, and we'll need amending as well yes uh, so it's just three thousand dollars that uh, the second part of an annual grant that we apply for to help us with our uh, uh, facilitate our health and wellness programs throughout the course of the year so. okay right. any questions from the board okay Commissioner Robinson Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, Director Perry, what, what type of programs do we offer? And like, what, what's a highlight for the record that's been successful? <coughs> you just want to know for the record. Uh, the highlight? Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, our, our Lunch and Learn series is, uh, it has become quite popular. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had to uh, try to strategize uh, because we've had such a, uh, a large attendance. Uh, we're kind of running out of space. Okay. So we're looking to do, uh, instead of just one every other month, maybe two every other month to accommodate those who uh, we've had to actually turn away. Um, <coughs> we've had to limit the uh, participation to about 30, 30 individuals. So I would say that uh, thus far, the Lunch and Learn series has been uh, 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 quite popular. The yoga is, is growing, our yoga uh, exercises are growing. and. Um, uh, our annual health fair is, uh, is growing as well. So all of the, those activities and uh, some <laughs> other things that we have planned, uh, these monies will go towards it and Anthem also, also uh, offers us some monies as well. So uh, so it's been quite, uh, it's been growing. Very good, okay. very good. Thank you, Dr. Okay. All right, we'll move on to, thank you so much, uh, Director Perry, we'll move on to tab number 13, authorization to accept a donation from the Douglas County Humane Society in the amount of $40,000 on behalf of Wynn <coughs> Three Charitable Fund in memory of Mary Peace Wynn, Frank M. Wynn, and Judge D, uh, Dan Peekman to be used for the purchase of an x-ray machine for animal services and amend the animal services budget. That is huge, right? Yes, and I'm very excited to, um, we've been seeking funds for our x-ray machine for quite some time, mm -hmm. so I'm really excited to add this piece of equipment to our <coughs> medical um, surgical suite. This will save us a lot of time and money and help us provide services to the stray animals a lot faster. Any questions from the board? All right, congratulations. I know we've been yeah. talking about that for a while. Good, great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to tab number 14, authorization to submit a grant application with the Atlanta Region, Regional Commission for FY 2021 funds for the transportation <coughs> voucher program for senior adults and individuals with disabilities and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Watson. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we've been fortunate to receive this uh, grant from uh, the Atlanta Regional Commission. It's actually federal funds. Uh, we've been getting this grant since uh, 2013. <clears throat> this this grant will kick in on July the 1st, which is the first day of the, the state's new fiscal year. Uh, we would be receiving $102,000 in federal money with, uh, or $108,000 in federal money with a $72,000 local match and this will allow us to continue the voucher program currently we have 120 active seniors and individuals with disabilities in the program and 85 on our waiting list okay all right commissioner mitchell so does this affect the 85 the additional guys or, or no this no. this will allow us to maintain service that we're at now i guess which is the 120. yeah Got it. yeah this is uh, this is the same amount of money that we're receiving this year. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, so this, just what we normally receive, this is not in addition to Correct. the kind of offset that 85 that right. we've been trying to offset. Yes, sir. Okay. Any, any plans of, of trying to ask for more or? Well, we, we ask for more when they tell us there's more, <laughs> more available. Okay. For like, like, like last year, we were able to get $10,000 right. more, but this year, they ask us to maintain it if, if what, yeah. what we have. Okay, okay, all right. And I know that in, in this list of 85, I, I thought at one time it was a, a little bit less than that, or is it a, a week? Is it well, it, it, it fluctuates <coughs> some. Um, there'll, there'll be some months when we have a, a number of individuals who, who request to be entered into the program. Uh, some months we have more, some, some we have less. But, but the thing is that, that once an individual um, becomes active, mm -hmm. they, they stay in the program until unfortunately they 
these clients live in the areas that aren't so served by the bus service. Okay, but uh, surely some of them uh, are able to get the bus system. Yeah, there, there's been a few. I don't I don't have an exact number yeah. on that. But of course, you would think it would offset it you know, a little they, bit. <coughs> and we try, when, when we're counseling with a client, we, we certainly ask them to look at that to see if the fixed route service um, will help them, um, and it has helped a, a few, but really not enough to make a significant difference mm -hmm. in the voucher program. And this is probably off the wall, but can any of the funds from the FTA, uh, well, yeah, the, the, the grant money that you're getting, none of that can be applied to helping us buy more vouchers? No, ma'am. Okay, because it's Get people off the road. <laughs> okay. All right. I yield back. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Guys. Commissioner Robinson. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll just dovetail on the back of this. Rec, rec, I was down the same path. Um, like you said, back in 2013, we've always had this conversation. I can remember um, Commissioner Mole here sitting next to me. Or, we were at that time um, in our seats, and it was always this this notion of, of of doing more for the senior senior voucher program, but there was never the political will to actually fund it. There was always this notion that it was part of a match program, but there was nothing, especially 13, 14, 15, 16, when we had sufficient cash that you could have we could have easily took care of the seniors versus the animal shelter. Stay with me. Five in cash. So again, back to priority. Um, Gary, what would it take to take all eighty-five off the books? In local, Just roughly. Yeah, in local money, seventy-five thousand to a hundred thousand. Right. So seventy-five thousand to a hundred thousand a year, or just what, explain that just for the public, like was stated earlier, for the public's sake. Seventy-five thousand gets you what one year, or that would be per year, yes. Sir. Seventy-five per year. So 50, I mean, I could get 10 hundred years out of five million for animal shows. I, I, I'm just, I'm, and I, I'm always sensitive to what, what we, 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 sometimes we may strain a, a single solution where there was other options that we, we were accept, excessive in our appropriation, right? We find ourselves short. What that seniors weren't always here. They've always been here. <coughs> They've always been here, but yet, you know, we, we had other priorities, right? And so I'm looking at this, and so and this is my last point, because we, we, we can always pick this up at another time, but for the seniors, and again, I don't disagree, these are seniors that are really disabled, have a unique need, and all. I need that private provider to come to me. I don't want to be part of some type of bus route taking me somewhere along some routes. You're coming to me and taking me where I got to get to. Is that more like the program is? That's what. That's how the voucher program operates. Yes. All right. So, so I, I, I'm not looking for you know the ride around. I, I need to get where I got to go because of where I'm at. Do you have any demographic data? Is that any any of that information available to know what are we looking at? What is the profile? Because some of, some of our commentary seems to be it's, it's not specific enough, right? In other words, like well, who who really uses the voucher program versus who would be more eligible fix for fix? I think when we start making real decisions, we, we can sort of separate the money, but do you have any of that data, is that, that data available? I know we can't get into the people themselves, but is any of the data available? Well, certainly we have the addresses of where all of our clients live, which would help us to determine whether they could possibly use a fixed route service or uh, they would be candidates for the voucher program. All right, so I'm gonna make a, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this ahead of time, so, because I know, you know, <coughs> Sometimes people don't know what I'm thinking, and I, I, I typically make up what I 
I tend to motion in the moment. Um, but just for the record, I'm going to, as part of my condition tomorrow, is suggested in a future budget cycle that we go ahead and take these off the books. There's no way we can go through this and we talk about our seniors, but yet $85,000, guys. I mean, we got people coming in, $50,000 raises, $40, $30. And we can't take all these dollars off the books. But okay, that, that's just me, Madam Chair. I, I tend to make that now. My peers obviously can move independently, as we know they can. But I think that, you know, what's that, seven years we've been having this conversation? And how much have we spent every year since then? Right? And we, 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 and we look at it like, oh my, the seniors, the seniors, guys, there's nothing to it but to do it. But I just want to drive on that point that, Gary, remind me tomorrow, we'll talk about it, you can give me a more specific number, and we'll take that offline. But I'd like to just for a, a future record, not in this, uh, I'm not making the motion uh, in the current budget, but just as a future, as I said, future moment. So I yield up to you. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Carpenter. So, Director Watson. Um, do we have or have we explored any of the nonprofit transportation organizations in Douglas County? We, we, we've been in some conversations with them, mm -hmm. but to this point we haven't been able to, to come up with any kind of arrangement or, or coalition that would help us with this. I really wish we would push um, for the staff at your office to do so because I know, you know, I hear my colleague Commissioner Robinson talk about, you know, we need to take it up. But of course we do know that our budget is limited. And so I would like for us to look at a public, you know, partnership with nonprofits to really be able to push those eighty five off the list. I mean if we can bring a little to the table, we can get those entities to bring a little to the table and service the um, individuals in our um, community, I think that would be a great thing. So if you can, if you can get my girls over there to, to start yeah. looking, to, to push that a little bit more. I think we'll, we'll continue that conversation and try to wrap it up. Thank you, I would appreciate that. Uh, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Carter, the Commissioner Valley. Yes, uh, Gary, didn't a few years ago we added 20? Mm -hmm. uh, so we have been listening to <laughs> the need uh, of course, the funds uh, may not be available, but if we, instead of the fixed routes, if we had the dial a, route, dial a ride routes instead, we could accommodate every senior in the county, could we not? Well, the, the dial a ride would be open to, to everybody in the county, seniors, disabled, just normal people. But you could go and pick them up yeah. even if they lived in Fairplay yes, because right now Fairplay doesn't get serviced. Nothing past about Stuart Mill Road gets serviced. Right. We could do so that. or going west. So it would uh and it wouldn't cost us any more money to go to that. Um because we could use the same <coughs> grant for the dollar ride, could we not? No ma'am. Oh we couldn't? No, no we well, I know that it's on the table now because I saw something yeah, we about could, we could, the, the grant that uh, we have now is strictly for fixed route. Now, there would be s some other grant possibilities for the dollar ride program, but it would have to see the separate pots of money. Yeah. Well, I know it's very popular in Carroll County, so uh, their bus is staple all the time. So, with that, I'll go back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner. Bell. Uh, Director Watson, I just had one question for you. Last year, were we able to add a few more people to the uh, to the voucher program? I believe we yes, did some funding. Yes, ma'am. Because we got a little extra money last right. year, we added about twenty people. Twenty. Yes. Um, if you would, if you could just explore several options for the board of commissioners and bring back a plan uh, <coughs> for the next meeting uh, and just discuss uh, some possibilities for removing these eight five uh, citizens or seniors that are. So we're waiting on the list. I'm quite sure we could be created. Okay. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Robinson? Yeah, I, not to mix the, the topics because the, the topic was um, senior voucher, but obviously um, the CMAC was on the agenda as well. The same reason. So as the previous question, you can't tie the two together. Again, um, when they're both on the agenda at the same time, you can't merge them. Um, that, that, that being said, um, I want to be careful in setting expectations of the public. Uh, we went down this path with a fixed route. 
uh, the current uh, federal funding was tied to need. <coughs> the need was primarily driven out of District 1 and District 2 based on federal requirements. Right? Go, go. And it's important to look at the map. The routes were designed to satisfy that need. It's singular. This is a three-year pilot program, and we're just getting started. Um, there's some adjustments that are being made to the routes to fully saturate that need. <coughs> um, and I'm sensitive that, um, and I'm going to speak to the character areas because every district is a little bit different. Um, but at the decision time that this was being made, the funding was associated with the, primarily District 1. District 1 drives the bus system, followed by District 2, based on pure need tied to this federal funding. Now, in the event that the Board of Commissioners wanted to go beyond that and use digest money, like we originally thought, that's fine. Right, but I, I don't want to dilute funding sources. So Gary, I appreciate the fact that what you were saying, that there's other funding that may can be done. We recognize that over in Carroll County, that is a rural area, and we recognize that dollar ride is important. I, I would suggest, you know, I brought this up in our committee, well, just like we went and um, worked with Cobb to take the fixed route that way, then perhaps get, you know, Carroll to cut a deal the other way, use their dollar ride. Because part of this is about reasonable mobility, right? It's like, okay, well, let's think bigger. Like, let's think reasonable, right? It's crossing jurisdictional lines. So we did talk about this in our transportation committee. So I don't want anybody to think that we were, um, that there is a, um, a resistance to that. But, but in mapping out this three-year pilot program, it's like, okay, let, let's maximize what this is. Let's learn it. But, but I'm very cautious about diluting um, the essence of it. Um, but I'm, I am open to perhaps future options. I do recognize that perhaps some of our, uh, when the decision was made, some citizens um, got left out. I, I get for every decision somebody wants a yes, and for every decision somebody wants a no. Even in District 2, every decision I make. So I'm sure that people in other districts that are not being served, there's some that actually won it when the decision was made, or rendered, we don't want it. I get it. Uh, but Gary, I don't want you to get caught in the crossfire of, of, of sort of um, and you have to balance how, how, we, how we look at this. I know that there has to be some type of analysis. I think we brought that up and the county administrator will acknowledge that as well. And perhaps I recommend my peers to take a look at the last transportation committee meeting in which this was discussed. But uh, I just wanted to bring that up for the record because I know you guys did talk about it and you, um, you had some thoughts about it. But I, I think that for me, that, um, I'm, I'm open to the voucher. Um, I, I recognize what Madam Carthen said as it relates to, well, we've got a budget, um, you know, it, it, it has limitations. I'm sure you're looking for options. I get it, but it's it. It's it. We, we're always finding, you can justify any action you make as an elected official. We, we can rationalize any decision. And we do it quite easily. Sometimes we, we dig in and we, we, we try to say, well, it's the right reason. Sometimes things just flow through. But the question is, are the seniors our most valued <coughs> asset in this county? And they deserve more than, okay, now we're going to get stringent on them. Oh, but we can spot money for everything else. So I just, I, I'd like for us, I, I'd rather stand with the fact that we can find that 85000 if we wanted to. If you guys really want to make a difference for our seniors. Uh, but I, I can't get ahead of my peers. Obviously, it takes three. So. I'll give you a further discussion. Yeah, and I understand that a person who serves on the senior, senior and aging board that represents Douglas County from the Atlanta Region Commission, I am so number one for our seniors all the way through. But of course, I want to look at some options, and I'm happy that you will bring us something back, um, Mr. Watson, Mr. Watson, that will justify our movement as soon as possible to take care of these seniors. I'm, I'm very I'm confident and comfortable that you'll bring something back. And we just need to look at other places to see what they're doing. But I'm quite sure that we, and I, I agree with you, Commissioner Watson, 85,000, we can find it. We can find it today. But I want to make sure that you look at all the options and then we go from there. What he said was the seniors have this program until they basically to the end of their. Right. So that's a long list. I know the seniors are living longer. And look at the queuing they have to do. I mean, they're just sitting there until basically some, I mean, I'm like, okay, guys, we, why they got to sit there to get a ride 
I'm not critical, so I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm hidden because it's the first time I've ever heard that, that that voucher program was based on the fact of um, they hold that seat. In other words, they, they keep that voucher for the people who want to vote. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They keep it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. Yeah.
mimics the blood system, the body's physical system, as well as technology, right? They all have evolved. Everything is about nature. All right, we get that. Um, could we have um, anticipated, and I'm going to use what I use, long-term capital plan, even an outlook like, okay, what is our, our, our knees down the road? We recognize that we need to invest, um, obviously, in our infrastructure. Uh, my question, and I don't know the question, and the committee can speak to it, and it really isn't really, it's not a tough question, but should we, um, not a question of whether you did it or not, but, but should we be looking at a long-term technology plan? And I'm not talking about those pie-in-the-sky type things, I'm talking about <coughs> fundamental infrastructure. Um, when I'm thinking about, when I listen to servers, I don't know, that sounds like a big, big machine to me, but when I think about our partners in the community and stuff, that like, okay, so, why are we here? We got these big, giant, six, seven, eight data centers that are in our backyards. The largest nexus of data centers in the southeast United States, better than any other city, county, uh, around. And yet here we are, and like, can we have that conversation? Have we had that conversation? If, is it even considered to say, hey guys, some of this, we shouldn't even have this problem. Right? It, it, it's inherent within the exchange of, of incentives and whatever. Now, I, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not suggesting anything, but I'm like, surely you shouldn't, I mean, I'm like, I, I get you can only do what we give you. <coughs> and I get that and, and from appropriation, so I'm sensitive to that. But is there, is, is there a bigger leverage play here? Right? We, we, we talked about how much we got this dark fiber and all this stuff here in the ground and how the people that came before this Board of Commissioners 20, 30 years ago put that out there on Riverside and and, and, and an obviously Thornton Road that we just inherited we, because obviously we didn't plan for it. But but yet here we are and you've got this asset and these partners sitting out here. How do we, why can't they host us and do so many things or is it just more of a control that we prefer to have our own service and us going there? I mean, talk to me about why we're here. Um, and, and asking me, because that, I mean, I'm okay with the money, I'm okay with the lease, whatever the committee says, I'm fine. I'm back up from there. I'm fine with the money. Talk to me about, like, isn't there a better way? Talk to me. <laughs> I know. And Rush, we've had this conversation. This ain't a tough one, I know. <laughs> You're good. You got it. Just speak from the heart. So, no, so the general, the, the general idea there is, is should we have things here or should we leverage uh, some of the data center partners in the area? Uh, that's kind of just a, a general philosophy question, right? It's do you want to pay for things as a service? so that you're paying for them over and over year after year and you can consume those as an operational expense or do you want to do capital uh, at interval so that you own all your equipment we could absolutely go with a private cloud company that's hosted in a data center here in the county no longer have to buy servers and those kind of things right but the operational expense for your information services department would drastically increase uh, because now we have to pay an annual subscription for services. Uh, cheaper every time we need to increase that, but once again, it's uh, you're compelled to pay that every year or services go away. Uh, the fact that we have our own data center, we have no cost for the data center itself, but every time we want to expand it or grow it or add new services, there is a capital expense that will hit us. Uh, but at that point, we have three to five, maybe even ten years uh, where that capital is kind of all we had to pay for and there's not that year-over-year -year operational expense for it. So it's just a philosophy idea. Do you want everything to be an operational expense so we move it out and we do it all as a service or do you want to pay for it as capital as we go uh, and then we keep it in-house? So there's several ways to deal with that. It's just a philosophy. All right, so, so stay with me. So here we are. We've got um, ground <coughs> infrastructure roads that haven't been maintained. Right, we're, going, we're going to pay the operating expenses. We can do it through our operating budget, or we can go through some type of other funding mechanism to deal with that, right? These are big expenses. I'm with you. But if you don't maintain them year over year, now you get this balloon moment, right? Because now you got to deal with it. Now you just had a heart problem, right? Now we're trying to add technology from well, this group and, and from this constitutional officer, and, and now you delaying not you. Our revenue gets exposed and everything that we're trying to get do, get done from a leadership perspective is like, okay, because it, so where I'm going is about anticipatory. It's like, no, I get it, 
And it, it doesn't have to be either or. It can be both. It's a blend. So sometimes we think in absolutes that we got to do it this way. We just, like, okay, well, maybe we need to be somewhere in the middle. Because we have not anticipated this. And, and I, what I'm hearing is, and again, sometimes I'm hearing that we didn't know all these projects were coming along. It's like, well, I did, but it's not my job to keep up with everything to know that it's like, okay, well, why don't we know this? Why didn't we know that we had these big giant projects coming online? I mean, what, what, what was the communication mechanism from one department to the other that we didn't know these big giant decisions that the Board of Commissioners making that we didn't, we couldn't get ahead of? Because to your defense, this shouldn't have been cut out the budget. There's no way this should have been cut out the budget. This is too critical. Everything we're talking about doing, every <coughs> upgrade you guys have done from HR to compliance to task commissioners, like all this stuff is, is sitting in your lap. And the very thing, like, okay, well, the Board of Commissioners told me no. Well, it didn't make it to the Board of Commissioners. You should say it never made it that far. But to your defense, you, you shouldn't be here. So I come back to say that I do support this uh, to my peers and to the committee. I, I appreciate your work done. But I also want to acknowledge that this is the type of stuff that, and, and, but sometimes yell a little bit louder, um, you know, um, but, but this, was, this was too important. And so now, what will this take? Now, now let's just be honest. Now, what, what, this is my last point. So we've got these key projects that are coming online, and now you've got to put this new server in, on board. Um, some, of the, some of the projects that we're anticipating going live this year, are they pushed off a year? I'm just getting right to it. So what about the tax commissioner? So, <laughs> I'm so uh, yeah, so that's, that's a good fact. One, I'm going to hit a couple things real fast that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how did we get here was the improper utilization of the technology committee. So, I'll throw that out there, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, there were things happening within departments and plans that were being made uh, that never made it to the technology committee. So, the technology committee was unaware that these things were happening and they just happened. Uh, it's not that the infrastructure is not there for us to be able to plan on it. But it takes department heads and constitutional officers utilizing the infrastructure we have in place, being our committee system, uh, for that to actually work right. And that didn't happen in this case. So that's part of how we got where we are. Yep. Um, other things that may hold up. That there is the, the so the tax commissioner has a couple of projects in flight. Uh, one of them, the one that is holding up, is actually not the big project. It's a it's a side project. So we move forward with. A new credit card processor, the name of that company is Government Window. Uh, one of the new features I think that they're trying to put in place is the ability to uh, accept online payments. And for that to happen, we have to have a server <coughs> built in-house, in, in on-site, uh, that will allow those transactions to flow from the web to our current tax collection system. Uh, that can't happen without the server being set up, and we cannot set up the server. So right. that project is absolutely stalled. Uh, until we overcome this. Now, as far as the, the larger project that the tax commissioner has uh, moving forward later this year with the new tax collection system, uh, that is actually a fully hosted SaaS service provided by Tyler. Uh, that'll be completely hosted by the vendor. Um, the only impact it'll have for us is some networking things, uh, and it's all paid for within that contract itself. So the problem that we're trying to address today uh, that will not be a problem uh, that would impact this future project. Now, beyond that, there is um, there are potential opportunities this year. I had a conversation with uh, Ed Dean over in the GS department. He has the potential for some new software later this year uh, that would require us to scale out, and we won't be able to do that without this system. Um, some of the things that we're looking at from a security perspective, uh, we finished a cybersecurity assessment. Um, earlier this year, uh, there's some opportunities for us to do some things around cybersecurity with logging and whatnot that we would not be able to progress with this year without this solution. Uh, and those are a couple of things that, one, that we could push off that we anticipated may need to be pushed out when we didn't get this approved. Um, but those are some other opportunities this year uh, that this will address uh, should we move forward. That's basically enough, Thank you. I have a question for you. When you say you didn't get this approved, Okay, Mark Till and myself were there and also Jennifer Holman. Did you make it very clear to us that that was something that you needed that was at the top of the list or you were not aware of all this behind the scenes thing, but like for example, the tax commissioner and those other departments that were making moves that you were aware of, I believe you, you, you indicated that we had enough uh, time, we had a little time to buy some time to allow us to maybe make it to next year. 
certainly the answer is not always no. The answer for me is always yes, if it's very important and, and it's something that's going to make this county move forward. And uh, so um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm on board for the 56,000 or either whatever you need to do to get to the next level. But I certainly don't want the messaging to be that you were told no. So, Mark, can you chime in, please? Yes, well, Russ and I had the, this exact conversation when we were going through the budget. And this was something at the time we didn't see anything coming on board that would require us to have more storage. Right. So, and it could wait till next year. So that's why that decision was made. And we weren't aware of all the things that were going on coming. behind the scenes. So right. And I agree that, that we agreed it was a manageable risk right. at the time. Okay. Right. Uh, and, but the conditions surrounding that have changed. So I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm definitely not trying to jump on and go, we tried to ask and y'all didn't give it to us. It's not that, right? right. Um, hard decisions had to be made. We saw this as a manageable risk and we moved forward uh, in that vein. And now, yeah, like I said, conditions have changed and, and now it's it's a different priority than it was at the beginning of the year. And I agree with you to managing the risk. I'm managing narrative and messaging. So thank you. Commissioner. Yes. Uh, Russ, you can only plan for what you know is coming down the pipeline. Uh, and uh, you were completely unaware of this. The, it was never brought to the technology committee. Like every other department brings uh, things to the technology committee. If they're going to connect to our network and our, our servers. So this was completely, uh, you didn't know about it until the equipment had been installed <laughs> in an, another office. And so um, we, we need to really point out the necessity. It's like paving a road without it going through the transportation mm -hmm. committee or, or something <coughs> like that. This is very important. You, and, uh, you can only plan ahead if you know what's coming down the pipeline. So it's very imperative that each department head and elected official, uh, they they're invited to the technology committee for a purpose. And if they don't bring it to our, our committee, then um, funding is already tight. We, we have a $250,000 um, contingency fund that this is going to have to come out of. Um, there's already something that's already come out of the contingency fund. And so this is only March, 1st of March, you know? We've got uh, a, a lot, lot more, we've got 10 more months to go that we're gonna have to rely on that contingency fund. And this is, um, <coughs> this is something that could have been avoided had the procedures in place had been uh, followed. So uh, I just wanted to point that out. You can't. No, I understand. He can only do He's as on. much as he knows about. I mean, he can only plan ahead. It's like when you budget, you plan ahead for the budget. And I, anything that's hitting the budget uh, that wasn't planned for is going to have a detrimental effect on it. So with that, I just yield back. And I agree. You didn't know. That's why I'm saying it's behind the scenes and things that you were. And also, I want to make it clear to the public that we did not say no. The answer, you know, I'll give you whatever you need. And uh, so with that being said, any other questions or comments? Yes, yes. Okay. And Commissioner Mitchell is okay. the chairman of the committee. Yes. And, and, I, and I, I appreciate my colleagues for all the input that, that we're having to deal with. But, but you're right, we, we didn't know. So it didn't, you know, we've got to understand that within uh, um, this layout of who knows what's going on, Russ and, and the uh, committee is not always aware of the share, which we are now saying we already working on trying to make sure these guys are at the at the committee meeting only because we need to kind of make sure of these types of infrastructure type of uh, situations that may happen that may be good. But we, we may not have the capacity to fulfill that type of a, of a move that will affect our infrastructure technology. And as we stated, managing the risks, uh, two years ago, I would say if not more, that we've had these discussions and we've actually moved on the IRs from the from standpoint of we can try and manage it again. We can try and manage it later. We can try and get to this point later. Uh, <laughs> yes, we decided as a board to we can hold off on this versus 
spending the money on the infrastructure now. And this is not just a tax commissioner or a records uh, problem. This is a county problem. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is, this is a county problem. It just happened to happen at the time of the tax commissioner wanting to add to this uh, space in one time that we need, correct? Yes, if anything would have been, regardless of who it was, tax correct. commissioner or anybody else. Correct, it could have been records. Right. It could have been the GIS correct. and so on. Uh, and it just happened to happen at the top of the year that we was gambling with. Maybe we can wait to the end of the year before anything, any requests of this caliber would have came about. Again, that's the that's a risk you take that we've taken out the last two years. No, I mean, no, no, nothing against what you've done and what we've done as a committee and as a department here. But what we got to all understand too, though, is that this this need was already discussed roughly two years or so ago. But here we are now having to cross that threshold because we ran out of space, basically, in so many words. Okay. okay, so we ran out of space. Right. Uh, say what now? We ran out of money today. Well, <coughs> space and money, they, they go hand in glove. But at the end of the day, I think we this situation was going to happen whether it was with the tax commissioner, which I, I would hope that we stop trying to, and not that you're doing this, saying that it was because of the tax commissioner. It's just that it happened to happen during that time, of course, and point in time when he was needed to add to the server or the space that was needed, and it wasn't enough there to add what he was trying to do, correct? Correct. Okay, so, but I think we've had this, this, this infrastructure capital lease and or purchase conversation on many of the This is not the first time this conversation is being had. We just decided as a board and commissioners to decide on we're going to hold off another round. Let's see, can we wait another minute? Let's see, can we wait to see can we get there? Because we've had this discussion about making sure that everybody was at the table and all the time. We, we, we constantly have this conversation, but now we're really taking a hard look now and making sure these guys are at the table because of this because of this situation really came to light because they were not at the table. So we didn't know that this was gonna happen, but that doesn't stop those constitutional officers and others, the judicial system and others <coughs> having to use the, the infrastructure that Russ and the team is put in place. So I'll yield that though, but I just, you know, I just just caution us as to, you know, kind of what we've done as a committee and what Russ has done as a department head and how well he's done and where we are. Um, we're not here because of adding or not adding to the system. This was gonna happen. The question is when. So two years ago, we had the discussion, but we decided to wait. A year ago, we decided to wait. And now we're here. I think you want to add something more. Yes, yeah. so Commissioner Goddard mentioned contingency. So is this contingency or is it fund balance? Oh, tell me what the, what the fund's going to come yeah, out. For the fund. Good, good question. The contingency is this: is it 275? Is it 350? 260. 260. We have to make some kind of balance. Balance. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. But I'll while you find it out. I'll just add though that the committee decided as uh, uh, unanimously to, to support either with the tax commissioner possibly giving a portion or without the commission giving a portion. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we left the committee. I know you decided you, 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 you have the option to change your mind, but we left the committee with that type of a makeup. Plan B was to actually do it with the, with the whole of the um, tax commissioner helping <coughs> out with a portion. And we said, if not, we'll go to plan B, which was we would have to fund it, whether it's through. Uh, 217000 right now. That's the balance. That's the balance. Okay. So, and I'll leave it at that note. And I appreciate you guys' support. Thank you very much. I yield. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be, okay. I'll, I'll be oh, good. So, again, but this is where, again, we come in here part time. And most of the, the topics we talk about are grants and so forth. They're cookie cutters, yes, 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 yes. Um, but every now and then you have to weigh in on the topic and the cars um, are a real debate, um, a real expression of positions. Um, I, I'm going to come back to long-term capital planning, whether it's technology, whether it's transportation. And what happens over time, and this is sort of a, a broader, and I'm going to Use your word, you talked about like ideology or uh, you know, your philosophy. Is that at some point you can let your body age, 
you don't maintain it. <coughs> I don't get to check up, I don't do the maintenance, and I'm just gonna let it drop because I didn't do what was necessary. And things begin, if you don't do the annual checkups and you don't maintain and you don't take what you need to take and so forth, it catches up with you, right? This is a mission critical system, no more than our transportation. And you can kick the can as much as you want to. And you can rationalize every decision, whether it's $2,000 or $2 million. Eventually, if it's mission critical, it will catch up with you. That, that balloon will hit you. If you'd have maintained along the way, you'd been fine. Right, you, you could have marginal, you, you could have minimized the, the consumption, the, 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 you know, the, the being able to absorb that hit. But because you don't have like a private sector company, the capacity to have these huge hits without having a real impact on citizens, this is when your fiscal policy gets challenged. And your ideology is like, okay, you can age this thing out if you want to. <laughs> You're gonna pay for it sooner or later. And it's gonna be major. Right? You, you can't be delusional about what we're looking at. You know, he, Russ is fine with my, in my conversation. He knows that we've had this conversation. So again, one more time. It's like you have to make your investments. And so my question is, this is a, a three-year band-aid. I think I heard you say that, and I could be wrong if you said that. But what is the long-term solution? Because I'm always, what is the infrastructure? Where are we going? What, well, who's leading us technology-wide? And, and I'm not, he knows it's not him. I'm giving his platform to say it. Um, which is, where are we going with this? So that those who have to weigh in that committee or this committee or the purchase committee can weigh in to help support that. So now, but we, we can't lead the administration on how to think. But they, you know, our job is just to check and balance whatever decisions are made. But weigh in, Russ, and, and really, and that's my only question. Well, is this enough and where are we going with this? So unfortunately, there's never an end point with technology, right? So for us to look at this and go, how much do we need to spend to be done, right? That's an impossible question to answer. Because we're going to consistently grow, technology is going to consistently change, mm -hmm. uh, and there's only there's only so much projecting we can even do that. Um, as uh, one of the one of the big sci-fi writers once said, right? The only anybody that thinks they can predict the future, right, um, is a moron. Because in technology, you can't, right? There's just no possible way to do that. So what we can see, right, is that putting this solution in place covers the need that we have right now. Um, and then over the course of the next three years, we know about some other things that are aging out. And this is positioned perfectly to allow us to age those things out over the course of those three years and continue to move forward. Whether or not we add more capacity or not, that's built into this. Um, as those three years progress, the next three years become more clear. But to try to project technology more than three to five years out, honestly, to me, I think is a fool's game. Uh, and we just have to kind of move forward as we can. Uh, I think looking at this solution and the three years that it gives us is absolutely the right step now. And next year, we need to be looking three to five years out again and continue to make those changes. I'll, I'll be honest, I've been with you know Douglas County for just over six years now. And uh, as far as maintaining the body goes, I think we've done a really good job. I mean, we've we completely refreshed our network, which is an important piece of, of what we do. But that was done five years ago, right? So we are getting back to the point where that needs to be looked at again. Um, that has a five to 10 year lifespan, depending on um, you know how cutting edge you might want to be and how hard you stress it. Uh, our data center, when I started, there were four racks that were creating tons of heat. Uh, now we're down to one rack. We didn't have to buy a new heat, a cooling unit because we're able to reduce heat as opposed to increase in cooling, which is us moving forward. Uh, we have, you know, new Wi-Fi that saturates this building and other buildings because we have invested in it. So I think actually the Board of Commissioners, the Technology Committee have done a great job uh, of making sure we had the investment we needed to continue moving forward. But to think that we can actually plan out more than three to five years. Um, there's a point where I'll be honest, you know, if I tell you what we need seven years from now, I'm guessing, and I'm probably wrong. Stay, so. stay, stay, stay there, but it, it, we're going to keep that. And, and I appreciate we're not talking about being Jetsons. Uh, I think um, uh, mostly what we've talked about, even with our long-term capital planning, 
for um, economic development <coughs> presentation is three to five years. So let, let's keep it in the context. The question wasn't to, to, it's something that actually could be answered. Um, and it says that, um, yeah, but it's still an investment. And, and, and what we're saying is that technology is that important. Um, uh, our information over the share, information over on the judicial. And so my challenge is like, okay, but who's keeping up with all this? And who's really anticipating this? And, and, and what, I, what I can't accept is like, what is their they problem, their job. They, it's like, but somebody needs to be, have a complete picture. Now, how you break up the work, work breakdown structure is amongst the leaders. But if nobody can give me a single view of what's going on and we got to fund it, I got a problem. Right? So I just got to give me a single view. I don't care who owns what. If we're the single funder, then we should have a single view of everything, which requires a certain amount of communication among the peer groups, if that makes sense. Uh, and so I'm going to come back to, please work with us. I mean, we have these conversations. They shouldn't be rhetorical. But really, we're opening up a conversation. Okay, look, we're trying to hear something now. We're not, we, we, you know, don't be political. Really, I was looking for a serious fact, which is like, okay, come on, talk to us. Right? Because again, I, we can handle the ideology. I was looking for more facts that says, okay, and if you can't answer it, that's okay. But you sort of heads, and I'm sure you're going to work through your committee. But like I said, if your committee is exposed that you've got these silos, but then here we are as a, as a full board, we got to come up with funding options, I, I think that's somewhat. Um, I think you understand what our, our challenge is. So who becomes the champion to get that information? Is it you? Is it the county administrator? Who owns ensuring the board of commissioners gets a single picture where we're not exposed to sitting here having to do these one-off budget amendments? And so I'll leave it with that. Jennifer, uh, real quick, and just I'm going to yield the floor. Can you ensure that the board of commissioners can get um, to spend on contingency for the past 10 years? exactly how we have spent contingency every year over the year. Um, can you provide that for us? Sure. Thank you. Ten years. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. All right. Um, so, Russ, you and I have had this discussion. Mm -hmm. I've been here a year, and I've talked to you about you know, <coughs> some of the issues, or not really issues, but just um, concerns that, you know, if we had, you know, the service to go down, what would we do? You know, do we have a backup? Can we, you know, run the courts, run, run, run the board of commissioners, be able to, you know, do things that we need to do if our system was striked? Have you looked at that? Will yes. this help yeah. that? Will this virtual realiza um, virtualization help us in those events? Does it help? Yes, it helps because okay. there's a, I don't know, there's a technology called VMotion within VMware that VMware. allows you to take. Right. It, it just, as it sees the server die, it can bring that server back up on a whole another cluster of, of machines and you're all good, right? So a lot of times the machine can fail there and, and you're only down for a couple of minutes. Uh, that's one thing, right, that happens occasionally. Um, from a bigger disaster perspective, again, something the Board of Commissioners did a great job funding us on. We absolutely have a huge disaster recovery platform. Uh, all our machines are currently backed up. Uh, locally and to the cloud. The clouds are replicated by two different locations. So even if there was a, a geographic type uh, emergency where we had to evacuate the area, uh, we would still have access to our servers and the data would be relatively fresh as well. Um, I think the, the oldest we're going to have anything is going to be about four hours as far as our backups go. So uh, we think we're in a really good place um, as far as disaster recovery goes. Uh, that gets tested. Uh, the, the machines themselves get tested every night. They get spun up. We make sure that you can see a splash page, and then they go back down, and, and we make sure that they're actually, you know, they're recoverable. Uh, and then once a year, we actually spin up that environment. Uh, we go into that environment, make sure the mail server works, make sure the DNS server works, make sure the file servers are up. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the case of a disaster, all we really have to do is figure out the routing piece uh, because the servers are fine. Yeah. And my other um, question is to the committee. I hear some talk that you all wanted to take from another person's budget to do this, but this is countywide. This, this right. is for the county right. as a whole. Right. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, so why would we be taking from another officer's 
I can answer that. To, because <laughs> all of us would be. So that means we probably need to look at taking it from everybody's budget mm -hmm. in order to to make sure that we as a county as a whole would benefit from this, not just one. Well, I'm, I'm actually glad you bring it up. So I, was okay. just, I think it's interesting that a lot of times people look at the, the IT budget in general, right, and say, holy smokes, you know, the IT department in Douglas County has like the third highest budget of all departments out there, you know, taking public safety out of the, you know, out of the mix. But I, I think what people don't understand is that only maybe 10% of that is for the IT department, right? Everything that we pay for, everything that we buy, everything that we do is for every department across the county, all constitutional offices. We're paying for your licenses from Microsoft. We're paying to make sure you have Wi-Fi. We're paying to make sure your phone works on your desk. Right, so those aren't our things. Those are your things that we maintain for you. And that's why our budget looks like it's big because we're paying for a lot of stuff for a lot of people that's not us. And that's the case with this. Great. That's all I wanted to hear you say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Commissioner. Commissioner Guider, I believe. Yes, and this is just to clarify uh, what our Commissioner Carthen was talking about. Uh, this emergency uh, funding that we're having to do was based on an elected official not going the proper procedure, not doing the uh, proper procedure. He has a $150,000 contingency fund, which is just for whatever is needed. And so uh, we asked him to pay a third, a third of it out of his contingency fund. This is uh, taking the $50,000, $56,000 out of our contingency fund is like 22% of our contingency fund. So we felt like he could take part of his contingency fund uh, and to pay for this because this we could have gotten by this year without doing this um, <laughs> we could have gotten by without doing this this year had we known uh, if if uh, this had not happened so um, that's why I didn't sign the uh, recommendation because I felt like he brought this on himself, and he should pay some of it. He already had the equipment installed before IT knew about it. They called and said, we need to contact, uh, connect with your uh, server. And they said, who are you? That is not the way to do business. And uh, any, any committee would have a problem with something like that happening in their committee. With that, I yield back. Okay, thank you. Commissioner yeah. Mitchell. And I, and I, and we don't, we, I think we probably should be done with this in just about a second. So, what we have done as a committee, and, 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 and that's what I didn't want to make this about, is the tax commissioner and or whom, you know, cause there's, a, there's a, a, several things out that the committee knows and, and, and Russ knows as well, though, that that should have been done a certain way. But just because he happened to come on at the server time and needed this type of space, voila, because GIS, uh, records, and, and others, <coughs> where they were coming on board, they just didn't come on today. Tomorrow would have had the same situation. But let me go to this stuff. So much for that. Um, the, the, the things we have done as a department and as a, a committee, I mean, with the mere fact of uh, hiring somebody for cybersecurity, I mean, I think that's huge. But we can continue to spend money, as we always have said about this, this committee structure and or about the technology. You'll, you, you can't, you can, you'll continue to spend money in this technology game. It will only go up, and, and only because technology changes so fast. We upgrade our computers, what, every five years, three to five years? Yes. Then we go around and we try to uh, stagger that to kind of get rid of and, and upgrade computers. So there's a constant movement of technology that to say that it was this one situation that caused this is not, is not fair. Because I can say that with, with other things that were coming down the pipeline, it would have actually would have had this problem, whether it was in January or in July, it was coming. And it's been coming for over two years. Technically speaking, because we want to get the space even then, if you want to technically say that. But I'm not looking for an answer. I'm only, I'm only just trying to stress the mere fact of 
we know that this was coming. And yes, we did ask the task commissioner to pay a third as a request. You know, because yes, he started this this inquisitive uh, need for this. Not that the need was not there, but he the need was already there. It's just that the question as to when we were going to try to uh, do something to improve our infrastructure. So, with that being said, he decided to say, "Well, no, he had other things he had to do with the, within his department that he needed to get done, and that would take away from what he was already having to deal with his own his regular budget as of now." So, I get it. But the plan, as the committee special call meeting that we did, we stated, "This is a plan A, which was asked for a third. This is plan B. Yes, this this is plan B." And this uh, plan B was all agreed upon, as I stated, even though we can have a change of mind. That's, that's on you and whomever else. But that's what we had stated in the meeting that we left in. So I'll yield at that point. Okay, thank you so much, okay. Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, thank you so much, Russ. That was a wonderful presentation. Certainly we have a... Oh, 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 one last thing. I apologize. Okay. Okay. But, but which one are we going to do? The contingency? or the fund balance as to where this 56 was going uh, Russell, you could go back to the podium for a second. Russ, Russ go to Russ. The, uh, back no, to no, the no. podium for just a second. And yes, and I'll, I'll give you an answer, Commissioner. Okay, so. so uh, that, certainly, as we uh, cast this wide net, we, uh, certainly the clock is ticking, and we, we need space for our system. So I'm looking at it from a holistic view. We need to move forward with uh, the purchasing, and, and Mark will come off the fund balance board of commissioners. I want to okay. go with it because i got to do something because we realize that you need some space. Uh, and they, I just want to know how long it will take for this system to go effective and go live because we need to go live. I mean, tell me what happens at this point once we push the button. Right. So once, the once we have all the agreements signed and, and back in, mm -hmm. there's typically it's going to be about six weeks. Right. Six. It takes six, six weeks? weeks. Yeah. So what are we going to do in the meantime? And, and let me, let me system, actually throw it. So it's six weeks, right? Generally speaking, right. and I hate to get all in the coronavirus, but a lot of this stuff comes from China, right? Um, so there are, I, and I have not heard from Dale specifically that this purchase would be impacted by that. Right. But there are certain chips and things like that, right? That are made in China. There could be a delay on this. I have not. I do not know yeah, that. Don't know yet. Just want to put that out there. It, it's usually six weeks. Um, and then maybe a week or two for implementation. So we're actually looking six to eight weeks uh, to be able to make this available to, to the tax commissioner and, and the other projects like that. And, and that's why we actually call for a special meeting that okay. we call from the committee perspective to actually try to get ahead of this because if not, it would have probably made next, uh, the next, co not committee meeting, but the next meeting, which would have been even later. So that's why we push to kind right. of have a special call meeting. Okay. to have this discussion to push it not push it through quickly but to understand the urgency in this particular uh, request so and a, according to the tax commissioner as well he said we're losing money because he's not able to utilize the system so certainly what we need to do is just expedite give us the board of commissioners or particularly myself and mark uh, when you speak to you the person that you place order, give us an idea plus the chairman of the yeah. committee which is commissioner mitchell yes. let us know what the timeline looks like we need to get this in we're doing a lot of talking we need to move right yeah all right yes. i will yeah. let you know i will uh like i said as soon as we as soon as we have the documentation signed we'll be able to get hard dates so okay. on the and, and certainly we can decide later marbles what person gets what but today we need to take care of the system wow. yeah you know i don't want to hold the tax commissioner hostage because Everybody need to use the system. Exactly. Okay, we got. Now I'm trying to just finish up and I'll give back. Okay. But so so we're gonna put on the on the um, agenda fund balance where these funds will come out of. Yeah, it's gonna have to. Yeah. Source. Yeah. Yeah. So the source of funding will be the fund balance. And okay. Jennifer, I think right. you said I had just a little bit on there. I got a little over the ten percent, I believe, just a little bit. That may cover you think. So. And, okay. and then and then we close we close our books March fifteenth. So we're still so we're good. Okay. Thank you. We just got to move forward. All right, All right. Thank you. That was a long, drawn out discussion, but it was worth it. Thank you, um, <coughs> Technology Committee, for moving forward. And I'm really still looking forward to this website that's coming down the pipe. All right. Let's go on to tab number 17 authorization to approve a memorandum of understanding with the Douglas County Community Service Board for Mental Health Services and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Mr. Ray Lightfoot from the CSD. Good morning. Good morning. Any questions about the memorandum or? 
Uh, any questions? <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. Tom, just tell us a little bit about what you. Is there somebody here? <laughs> Absolutely. Here from the organization. Um, yeah, the organization. Yes. Uh, Mark. Mark. So somebody. Come come up cover. So, so last year the uh, board of commissioners gave us uh, fifty thousand dollars of core funding that was set aside for special projects within the community um, to target different uh, behavioral health issues and concerns. And so what this memorandum of understanding is, is uh, basically um, my commitment to the Board of Commissioners to use these funds and uh, get relative uh, information to feedback about what current initiatives are taking place and what's happening with the revenues. Um, last year we gave a portion of those revenues to um, Sweetwater Mission and United Way to help with homelessness uh, for individuals who had, uh, for children, excuse me, who had parents suffering from uh, mental health issues or from substance abuse issues. Um, this year, the initiative uh, will be uh, split and given to uh, D.A. Vi and Mark Lawrence, so I'll let talk a little detail about the project they have going on. Okay. We had a presentation last week, but thank you. Yes, um, we had the presentation. I'll take any questions. Mr. Um, Pinnaman is here, and so is uh, Mr. Lawrence. If you could just give us just a brief description of what the purpose of this uh, funding will be used for, uh, Attorney Vi. We were, um, we came to you guys, I guess a couple months ago, asking that we could implement some mental health um, initiatives and awareness here in Douglas County. And we went at length with that, and that's what we are actually following through with today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions from the board? Yeah. I do. Robinson? Yeah, this is this, this, just a follow up. The presentation was done, and this is just a closure. So I, I got two parts questions, so and, and, and I want to acknowledge the fact that. Um, to um, Attorney Valerie By, you did come before us as you guys came before us as private citizens. So I don't want any conflict in my mind or any analysis looking at this. Is that an accurate statement? <coughs> that is correct. All right. So that, that's the first thing. So any, any citizen out there uh, can create entities to help deliver services uh, back to the community. So I, I, that's one. And we've been and I appreciate the board of commissioners who helped appropriate this about three or four years ago. Um, back then. Second question is, is that what is the total amount of Director Lightford? Um, you know, is this $25,000 out of the total 50 appropriation? I know it'll be a total of $50,000 uh, broken into two uh, equal payments uh, throughout the year. No, we didn't agree to that. We said 25. We said first round 25, <coughs> and then after you proved yourself, then you can come back for a different round. And it's not you, right? It's <laughs> no, not you. You're, you're good, right? I'm looking behind me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. So, no, it was 25. We were clear on that last time, guys. Don't do that. It was 25. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, we're definitely aware of the first round being 25,000. Um, what Mr. Lifer was, was referring to was the entire, entire amount that's available. But the first round we do have set in our budget for 25,000 to begin our process, and then we'll be able to come back and show you guys deliverables and metrics on who we were able to touch, how much we were able to do, and then from there, of course, be able to follow up to hopefully get the other half to be able to continue our work. So we do have a budget right now that starts with 25000 for us to be able to start um, the initiatives that we're working on. Yeah, and, and, and again, this is important. Like, it, it, it recognized when we when we first started this, we used, we, we used CORE versus CSB as our facilitative um, entity. And they split it amongst three organizations, $50,000. You guys remember how we went through that whole process. Um, likewise, this is competitive. So that's why we like, we, we, we did, the board commissioner did not commit, nor did I imply that the full 50 would go, because there could be another organization out there that may want to do the same thing as far as fulfilling mental health. But it doesn't mean that you couldn't do it all. But, but again, I don't want to set the wrong expectation that it's, cause that's all we got. That's all there is. Absolutely. That's right. So it's, it's important that first things first, do what you're supposed to do in delivering the, um, against the 25, make sure you got your reporting. Second question, Ray Lightford, Director, were the expectations set regarding reporting and mid, and mid, mid, mid project status reporting? Was that covered? Um, we briefly talked about it. Um, what we're doing now is I'm getting with Mark and we're going to look for a quarterly reporting. Um, it basically, because of the calendar of events that they have set up, it's a little difficult because it's already forecasted out, I believe, uh, past six months. And so when we look at it, it's kind of like, what, what actual deliverables are we looking for that quick? Or is the overall uh, wraparound? Because um, one of the things that we're looking for is the impact with the students and is it um, attributing to um, more clients being seen from the school systems? 
Is it reducing uh, recidivism rates? Is it reducing um, teen suicide? And so it takes us a little time to gather those information because we have so many different uh, deliverables that we have to look for in each one of those categories and pools. Um, so we have talked about the matrix in which we're going to actually um, evaluate the key performance indicators, mm -hmm. but the time frame as far as reporting is a little sketchy because they kind of work hand in hand as a series of events that take place. Uh, and, that, and that's fair enough, and I think I'll, we'll, we'll lean to your expertise to work that out. I think from our, our historical perspective that what we don't want to be in a point where you cannot account for the dollars. Absolutely. Right, so that's our, our lessons learned uh, when we work with organizations out in the community that there's a formal side, um, th there's a business side to ministry, there's a business side to nonprofits. It's, okay, guys, you got to report the numbers. You got to tell us how many people did you, you, you touch, no matter how you touch them, and you got um, to get accounting for the spend, right, in, in some kind of way. And so we were looking to you to bring that expertise. Remember, that's why we gave it to you to help, <laughs> right. help formalize all that. So th this is not a bad thing, but we're saying it for the public sake that look, the public, to Adam Carson's point, the public can help deliver services. They're out there, but there's a, there's a level of rigor. Uh, there's, a, there's a level of, of, of formality that they have to have. It's not that you, you're, you're not qualified, it's just that you gotta do your part. Uh, and so we hopefully, that's why we said, no, we're not gonna commit that big, let's, let's just start small, prove yourself out with this 25 and we go from there. Once you get, get a record, I mean, um, it, it will roll from there, but I won't believe it, this, this is the last thing I, I'm good now, Chair. Okay. Can we just make that adjustment, though, um, to make sure it's clear? Ken? Yes. We would like to change. change. Yeah. Thank you. One time, 25. Okay. Assuming my, my, my friend, y'all okay, that that was the right expectation? It was only 25? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what you mentioned last. I know. Last week, 25. All right, thank you. You have this puzzled look, Mark. Are you okay? No, no. <laughs> There's, um, there are details in terms of the awareness metrics. We can we went through some of that at the last presentation, okay. um, and certainly we can repeat it. If anybody wasn't here as it relates to the school assemblies and the activities at the movie theaters and the research, as well as the social media. So we will, uh, as we get this information, whether it's quarterly or even monthly, we will certainly keep you updated on how many, uh, not only students but parents and families who are actually able to touch. Okay. And it'll be in documented style, written, written format, yes, or whatever. Absolutely. So okay. Thank you. Uh, I just want to add one thing. Also, just so for your clarity, guys, we did invite one of the school board members here today because we're already in talk with them about getting this active. Um, Mr. DeVitra and Caldwell is here today. Um, so we are working very hard to make sure that this is a community thing, Thank not you. just a mental health thing, but this is touching our entire community and make sure our students are touched and that we're working with the different NGs in the community to make sure it happens. Okay, thank you. Yes. Is board member call yeah. here for real? Yeah, he's here. You want to come up and say something? Or you? <laughs> he, just, he said, he said, he said you're, you're okay. <laughs> but, but you're okay with, you do acknowledge, and again, I'm not asking you to speak on behalf of your full school board, but you're, at least your office does support this and you think it's worthwhile. Because again, this is, we're over here. School board's over there. Uh, but these guys are trying to facilitate the two to make it work. Does it work for you guys? Can you speak to that? Um, what I will mention is that um, the school system, of course, is always looking to partner with the county and other entities. So um, if this is a, if this works, then we're certainly open to it. Um, we're definitely open to just seeing how, how we can make the connection. So as always, the Board of Education is definitely open to make sure that we serve the citizens of Douglas County. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. All right, we have our last one. Now we're at tab number 18, authorization to award a contract to Minerick Project Solutions MPS Grants Incorporation for the grant writing and administration uh, services for FY 2020 Community Development Block Grant CDBG for senior services not to exceed $12,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all uh, related documents subject to final legal review. And before uh, Dr. Gilchrist start, I would just like to say that we are building a new senior center, but us also we need to maintain the old as well. Um, certainly met with Dr. Gilchrist and Tiffany Stewart Stanley, and uh, certainly um, gave them the mission of going to Callaway Gardens to sit on a team so we could find out what <coughs> we could do to enhance senior services on Fairburn Road. And I appreciate her diligence as she worked through this grant process. Uh, we hope, uh, we are seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I'm not sure if many of the commissioners had an opportunity to visit the uh, site at Fairburn Road for our seniors. 
our seniors deserve the absolute best, and they deserve nothing but pristine services. And but the building itself, it, it, it's being it's challenged right now. We have a lot of opportunity, and this grant will help us move forward. Dr. Gilchrist, if you could take it uh, from here. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are um, excited, and first I'd like to say thanks to Madam Chair and the Board of Commissioners for giving us approval to move forward with seeking um, $750,000 in funding from the um, Georgia Department of Community Affairs. The process is extremely competitive. Mm -hmm. We are um, up for the challenge. Um, we went through the initial, they have very stringent um, requirements and um, we moved forward through the first phase, which was the procurement process for a grant writer and grant administration. So during that process, and I also like to thank Director Everett who um, kind of walked side by side with me through the process, stayed late um, working um, after hours so that we could meet all of their deadlines. And um, we only received one bid back and because of that we had to do what's called the sole source approval through the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. Um, our attorney, we had to um, obtain a letter from our attorney and also from Madam Chair. We got that in, we submitted it and um, because we followed the process to a T, we were awarded approval from them to move forward. And so here we are today asking for approval um, to award the contract for grant writing services to MPS Grants, Inc. in the amount not to exceed $12,000. Any questions? Madam Chair, we also, yes. and you can correct me if I'm wrong as well, but part of the DCA requirements for this, along with the grant writer, is to hire an engineer slash architect mm -hmm. to do cost estimates and and submit that portion of the grant so that will be coming down the road. We yes. did the bid opening on Friday. We received three um, bids in and so we will be um, evaluating those three bids. Okay. For the, yes, ma'am. Okay. Madam Chair, can I just add one thing? Yes. Uh, uh, Dr. Bureau Crest has worked her tail off of this, but <laughs> she mentioned Don Evers. I want to say something about Don that y'all don't see. I was getting emails at 11.40 p.m. at night, <laughs> and I just want to thank her for her hard work. I think it goes unnoticed sometimes when people work when they're not on the clock, yes. but on this one, she worked her tail off. And, Appreciate it. And I also like to say, and she, she may not um, speak to me after this, but um, Don did such an outstanding job that she received a letter from someone um, the purchasing director in Smyrna asking if um, she would assist her and if she could follow her process. So um, she did an excellent, outstanding <coughs> job in getting this approval for us from DCA. So, mm -hmm. very good. Thank you. Yeah. Pushing, pushing. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, any questions from the board? We just, okay. Questions. Yeah, I, I'll be quick. No, no, I, I just want to acknowledge, no, it, it, we always talk about going and, and looking at other counties and cities and so forth and see what it is great to be acknowledged that we're being benchmarked. So, so well done when we begin to establish practices that other people follow. So I'm glad to hear that, and especially from um, Director Everest, who just who took the helm. Uh, well done. All right, real quick. So, all right, we get through this process. How long do you think to build out, or maybe county administrator, because I know that may not be your idea. How long is this going to take, Mark, to be, once we get through all of it? So as far as the grant, the grant, yeah, the grant. when will we hear from the grant? The, the uh, grant is April. due um, April 1st. Yep. We have to have the grant um, in by April 1st. Yep. Um, once we are awarded the $750,000, yes. then we have two years okay. to complete the project. That's also the work. All right, so it's so two years from the time of the yeah, <coughs> renovation, so we would have to hire, there would be some design in it because there's a roof and uh, would probably be multiple bids, um, yep. or it could be one contractor either way, but there's, there's mm -hmm. multiple <coughs> issues yeah. that need to be repaired. How big is this building, county administrator? I don't know. Does anybody know how big? I don't know exactly. I mean, we're spending roughly 750 on what, though? Well, I like to know the dimensions, and just for the—it's it's really for the public sake. Sometimes it's not just 
for the sake of, the, I mean, it's like, it's an order of magnitude, mm -hmm. square foot per dollar, right? Can, so can somebody find that out for us by tomorrow, not to press it, but just curious. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, what were you gonna say, doctor? No, what I was going to say is that the grant cannot be used for the um, administration part where our offices are located. It can only be used for the areas that's utilized by citizens and the um, senior citizens. So uh, that's the square footage that we would need to right. take into account. So I would like to get both answers. How much this is going to apply to and how much square feet is the full building? Can we find that out? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Commissioner. Perfect. So since we have you before us and you know, we've posed, uh, we've had other directors before us, um, talk to us about what the needs are for the administration building and, and going forward. The $750,000 will only be used on the first half of the building where the seniors are and where I come in at on a weekly basis. But tell us about the other portion. Well, I think for the administration building, our main concern is, is we have rain that's coming in the building. Um, every time it rains, there's rain that comes into uh, my office and another um, of the staff offices. We work with property management on trying to correct that. However, um, the last um, round of rain that we had last week, that was still an issue. Um, at, other than that, for for the administration building, we're 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 okay. Um, my main concern is the area that the seniors utilize, and so in um, in that area, we have just a roof that needs to be repaired. Um, space wise, we're growing. Uh, one of my main initiatives is to try to serve all seniors in Douglas County who. Um, would like to participate in the program. We provide Meals on Wheels. We are one of only two counties in the state of Georgia that prepare our Meals on Wheels program um, food. We don't have the food brought in. And so um, that space, the kitchen, really needs to be um, torn down pretty much <laughs> and, and renovated. Um, also, we are also reaching out to um, more seniors in the county trying to let them know that we're here, um, that we um, value the seniors and that we are um, definitely have our opportunities and programming available for them. However, in order to meet the demand, then we would need to have more space. We are currently, we're overcrowded and making use of the space. So this grant would definitely um, help us in, in, in just um, revamping the space and using it in a better way, tearing down walls. Um, during activities, our seniors are pretty much just bumping into each other, trying to um, participate in the activities that we have. And you're the director of all of senior services in Douglas County, right? So that oh, she is. Yes. You are. You, you are. Yes. So from from Woody Fight to the Fairburn Road to what we are about to have come online. Yes. That would service mm -hmm. a lot of seniors in Douglas County. And with your expertise in this, do you think that even that is enough? Um, I don't think that it's enough. Um, I think we'll have a need to continue to grow because mm -hmm. as we stated earlier, seniors are, the life expectancy is increasing. Um, we also have to consider that seniors are not just um, sitting around crocheting that we have active seniors. Um, <laughs> we're looking at um, age 55. Um, as a senior citizen and so we want to look at it from a holistic perspective and touch the needs of those who are 55 or 95 and in order to do that um, the county is growing and as Madam Chair um, often says Douglas County will be second to none and so I think if we're going to to have that philosophy then we have to we, we have to build and to in order to continue to meet the demands of the growing population of senior citizens that's good to know. So when we are in here, you know, really, truly making the decisions <coughs> regarding budgeting for even your office, we have to take all of that into consideration. Absolutely. Yeah. So when we're sitting up here talking about TANs, and we're sitting up here talking about all, you know, these, these funding mechanisms that we have, we have to take into consideration the future needs, right? They're just not 
doing things just to be doing them. So, but I thank you for your time. I look forward to see what you're coming up with next. Thank you. All right. I yield my Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. We'll just keep pressing. All Thank right, you. Board of Commissioners, any other comments before I uh, ask the uh, attorney if we need to go into executive session? Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into uh, executive session? We do for litigation and personnel management. Okay, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. Okay, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote. Please take 10 minutes and then we'll come back. Thank you. <laughs> back on um, room live and viewable to the audience. Uh, thank you for the executive session. Uh, any other, anything else to come for this body? Um, our attorney, Ma Madam Chair, it's come to my attention that it wasn't announced when we went into the last executive session that we need an executive session for real estate. We cannot discuss whether or not you go into executive session or not, but I'd ask for a motion to go in, in the executive session for purposes of discussion of a real estate matter. That has time sensitivity to it. Okay. We have a motion. Second. Okay. second. We have a motion and a second. In the discussion, we have a motion and a second to go back into our executive session for a real estate matter. Please indicate by raising your right hand. We have a 4 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries. We will go back into executive session. Thank you, Attorney Bernard. Let me get the camera. Where is that? Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Just me. Okay, board of commissioners, we are now no, we back um, in like our meeting. Any other, we'll anything else to come before this body? Vice Chairman Robinson. Yes, um, Madam Chair, is there, is, is there any official um, position that we're taking regarding some of the, the public health commentary that's going on? Is there anything officially that, that the state has communicated to us as counties? Have you received anything from the CDC? What, what, what say you? I have not received anything as of yet. I have a public uh, health meeting on this coming Wednesday and I will have some information for our uh, board commissioners at that time. However, I do have some information that's already out there which is part of health care is, is my home land security for me. And keep your hands clean. That's number one. Plenty of hand washing. I have ordered uh, some uh, uh, sanitizer stations throughout the courthouse to make, and also we have some already, but we want to make sure that those mm -hmm. sanitizers are full, and then also want to make sure that we, if there is a need for some additional sanitizers, we place them throughout the, uh, the um, courthouse. And if you have a cold or you're sick, we encourage you to stay home and to, so that's very important. So right now, but I will, uh, You'll, I, I will talk to the board commissioners real soon, and that'll be Wednesday as soon as I leave my meeting with public health. And Jason Milholland, emergency management director, is in constant contact with the CDC. Yes. So right now, it's just the main thing is to keep your hands clean, wash your hands um, triple times more than what you've done in the past, and keep, please keep your hands out of your face. Okay? That's all I have for right now. Any other questions or concerns come before the board of commissioners? At this time, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. Now we're going to give you.